<sighs> I don't like Undertale. Uh, the internet's gonna crucify me for this, isn't it? Two years ago, today, Undertale was released onto Steam. Well, actually, it started spreading onto other websites. Really fast. Like, really, really fast. There was a literal flash flood of fan art and videos and talk about this new game, Undertale. Everyone was so fascinated and enthralled by it, and I didn't get it. The mass appeal just didn't really register with me. The artwork looked really basic and crappy to me. There wasn't a single bit of color in any of the characters, and some of them looked like they were drawn with a Wii remote. The gameplay looked really basic and uncreative, like the mechanics would get really old really fast. I saw some videos and lost my interest pretty quick. I heard some music and it wasn't really as good as people said. Most of my exposure to this game wasn't by my choosing. Like I said, this game was fucking everywhere. The only way for you to avoid it was to log off the internet, turn off your computer, and go outside and do something else. Hey man, have you heard about that new game Undertale that came out a few days ago? Pretty sweet, huh? I just beat it for the sixth time last night. No, there was no way to avoid it. It made its way off the internet, and started spreading like a disease. It started filling my YouTube and Twitter feeds, and I couldn't go anywhere on the internet without seeing this hot garbage. Out of sheer spite, I wasn't going to play this game no matter how many times people tell me to, no matter how good the review scores are. But there are some diseases that, no matter how many times you wash your hands, you still end up catching. After I'm doing all this, I might play a game. I'll show you my Steam library, and maybe whoever's watching can decide what game I get to play. Titanfall. I could play Titanfall, but, um, what do you call it? My, my origin account got hacked and stuff. Undertale, I... I'll play that game if someone buys it for me. I'm not going to go out and buy it for myself, because, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like something that I'd enjoy, because I've had a bad history with that game. Not really something... Not really a bad history, I've just not enjoyed the internet being clogged up with it. But if someone wants to buy it for me, I'll, I'll play it, sure. So I came up with this thing, right? I call it the source code. Get it? Because my name is and, and the software... Never mind. Basically, I made this rule for myself when it comes to playing video games, especially ones that I don't like. You can tell me all you want to play, I don't know, Paper Mario for the GameCube and I won't play it. However, if you send it to me, my rule is that I have to livestream that game if you really want me to. God damn it, I shouldn't be saying that publicly. So, you can guess what happens next. See, I could have done a roll credits there, but... Ah, uh, that was my phone. Hold on. It was... Someone just bought me Undertale, thank you. Hold on. Time to check my email. Someone gave me Undertale during a livestream. I play it, I livestream it, and I f fucking love it! Just kidding, it was awful. It wasn't the worst game I've ever played. That title goes to Star Forge or something with equally little originality. I enjoyed it about as much as a Call of Duty player would enjoy playing on a roleplay server in Gary's Mod. So before anything else, I'm going to address something important about my experience. Live streaming. So I do a lot of live streaming, like I stream more than I upload videos. And live streaming a game is an almost completely different experience because you have the live chat where you and the live viewers can talk back and forth, basically in real time. You ever hear of a backseat driver? If not, basically a backseat driver is someone who sits with you in the passenger seat of a car and basically gives you commands as if they're trying to drive. In a really annoying way. Luckily, I don't usually drive with other people, so I don't have to deal with backseat drivers that often. What I, and basically every other streamer, does have to deal with is backseat gamers. 
Usually with driving, you have a maximum of three backseat drivers. When I livestream Undertale, I had to deal with 20 backseat gamers at peak viewership. Everyone thought they were in control while watching the stream. Every time I looked at the chat, I saw people arguing about what they wanted me to do. Of course, I could only do half of what people wanted, which just pissed off the people who wanted me not to do it, so... That is definitely a factor in my experience. You know what? To be fair, and to rule out the possibility that I don't like this game just because of backseat gamers, I'm gonna play through the game for an hour or two from the beginning and see if I still don't like it. Let's have a short intermission and I'll be back to you in a bit. Okay, yeah, still didn't enjoy it. I know people are going to argue that I should have enjoyed it, so I'm going to come up with some common arguments people are going to have and tell you why those arguments aren't really going to work. You didn't play it to the end. This is one of the most common arguments I hear against people that didn't enjoy the game. The first thing you ask someone is if they played to the very end, and here's the problem with that. If I don't enjoy the first four or five hours of gameplay, I'm not going to be interested in playing however much longer to see how the game ends. Everyone's heard that saying before, the definition of insanity is trying something over and over and expecting something different. Saying you have to play the game to the end is like going to a restaurant, getting a plate of food that you think tastes awful, and someone telling you that it'll only taste good once you finish the last bite. That's not how food works, and that's not how video games or any form of entertainment works for that matter. If I'm not enjoying my experience for the majority of the time I'm playing, then I'm not really enjoying the game at all. You're playing the game wrong. This is probably the worst argument I'm going to get. Let me get straight to the point. If there's a right way and a wrong way to play a game, then there's something inherently wrong with the game. I shouldn't have to look up or be told how to enjoy something. I should be able to figure out how to enjoy it any way that I want. I think a lot of book and movie franchises have an extremely similar problem. Let's take Star Wars and use that as an example. A lot of people dislike the Star Wars movies because after watching the prequels, the original trilogy becomes more predictable. So what people did to remedy that is come up with a viewing order. They tell you to watch the movies out of the order that they're numbered in order to get the, quote, best viewing experience. And this concept is fundamentally flawed just from the fact that if people didn't enjoy the movies the first time they watched them, they aren't going to enjoy them in a different order. And it's even more flawed when it comes to video games. Each player has a unique playstyle, and telling someone that their playstyle is wrong is, first of all, offensive, and second of all, nobody's going to change their playstyle just to conform to one game. If your playstyle is supposedly the wrong one, you're just gonna go play a different game. If you don't like Star Wars, you're just gonna go watch a different movie. I don't think I have to explain that further. You didn't pay attention to the story and the characters. Okay, this is actually a potentially valid argument for once, but like the other ones, there are still inherent flaws with it, and these flaws actually apply to all video games. Telling a story in a video game is one of the most difficult ways to actually tell a story. Since games are a visual medium, a developer has to make use of those visual elements to tell a story. The best way I've seen a game tell a story is in Portal 2 made perfect use of the audio and visual elements that define video games to execute a story perfectly. Telling a story through written dialogue, through text on a screen, is one of the first mistakes you make when making a game. Using written dialogue removes the ability to tell a story through audio. Most importantly though, it forces the player to stop playing in order to read some text on a screen. With text, you lose the ability to convey emotion, sarcasm, and emphasis. You can't make a joke like this with text! I feel awful about that surprise. Tell you what, let's give your parents a call right now. The birth parents who are trying to reach do not love you. Please hang up. Oh, that's sad. But impressive. Maybe they worked at the phone company. It's such a simple joke, but if there were no audio, it wouldn't work. At all. It would look like it's text on a screen with no emphasis on sarcasm or any way to make it look like a different voice. And if a player didn't want any jokes or any story to ruin their gameplay, it doesn't pull them away from what they're doing to crack jokes like some kind of animated DreamWorks sidekick animal. This is almost definitely just my opinion, but I find Undertale's art style to be very limiting when it comes to visual storytelling. With pixel art, it makes it difficult to have characters make facial expressions or body gestures. 
And it does happen in the game occasionally, but it doesn't quite hit that hard. You can tell entire stories through a visual medium without any use of dialogue. And even if it's not a good story, it's more effective than text on a screen. You only dislike it because it's so popular. First of all, what? You think I'm 12 or something? No, seriously, that's something a prepubescent teenager would do. I hear this argument all the time with basically anything that's popular. I know a lot of people go on 4chan or whatever and say they don't like something popular just to start shit and see people's reactions. But if I'm dedicated enough to make a video that's 19 minutes and 7 seconds long, thoroughly explaining what I dislike about a game, do you really think I'm just saying that to start shit like the trolls on 4chan? Second of all, doesn't everything need to be judged no matter how popular it is? Isn't that the whole point of channels like Jello Apocalypse, I Hate Everything, CinemaSins, and even my channel? I make Crystal Sins not because I hate Steven Universe, but I think the show doesn't have enough critics. Sometimes people need a wake-up call so they can actually look at things with a critical eye rather than eating it all up when it's fed to them. Without criticism, nothing will ever improve. I'm sure you've heard someone say something like, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. Well, that's stupid! If you only judge something when it's good, then people who make things that are bad aren't going to know how to improve or even if they need to improve. You only dislike Undertale because of the community. <coughs> the Undertale community is a hideous, vile, disgusting, cancerous load of horseshit in a dumpster. I agree. But that's neither here nor there. The community isn't the game. The community is a result of the game's elements. And yes, I probably dislike a few of those elements, but you can't review a game based on the people who play it. I've seen plenty of negative reviews on Steam games only because those games have empty servers, even if the game is fantastic otherwise. There are plenty of reviews for Five Nights at Freddy's and even Undertale saying, the fan base ruined my experience. But like I said, when you play the game, it's not exposing you to the fan base. You can say something like that about Counter-Strike, Overwatch, or League of Legends, and it would be perfectly valid. Because if you can't play a single game without a toxic player on your team, then the game is exposing you directly to the community, and that's a flaw with the game itself. In a single player game, it doesn't work like that. I'm making a video about how I dislike Undertale, and here I am saying the community did nothing wrong. Seems kinda backwards, doesn't it? You can't dislike Undertale because it was made by one person. You know what other video games were almost entirely made by single developers? Let's have a roll call! Five Nights at Freddy's, Stardew Valley, Another World, Dwarf Fortress, Minecraft, Banished, Cave Story, Unturned, Papers Please, Tetris, Gary's Mod, Roller Coaster Tycoon, and more stuff you've probably never heard of. What I'm trying to say is that having a small development team is not an excuse and it is not nearly as impressive as it may have been 20 years ago. So now that those arguments are disputed before anyone can even make them, I'm going to start moving on to the specifics of what I personally don't like. The controls are ass. The first thing I ask the viewers when I livestream Undertale is whether I should use a controller. The answer I got back was that this game didn't support controllers, which was weird, but not too unusual since a lot of games don't let you use a controller. What was too unusual was the fact that there was absolutely no way to change your controls at all. When I played it again off stream, I actually set up my own controls on the Steam controller, just so I wouldn't have to deal with the stupid arrow keys on a keyboard. Bottom line is, if a game has bad controls, the whole game is bad. There's really no way to argue against that. If you can't play the game, the game is bad. What else is there to say? The controls in Undertale weren't the worst I've experienced, but the game would have been much nicer if I were able to play it on an NES controller. I can't stand the dialogue. Like I said earlier, there are inherent flaws with written dialogue in video games, but it's still possible to use written dialogue in a way that works. My rule of thumb is to keep it short and don't make it interfere with the gameplay. Undertale and many other RPGs have an issue with the length of their dialogue. I've been recommended games like Paper Mario, but I've been staying away from playing them because from what I've seen, there's way too much text in proportion to gameplay. Undertale has a major flaw. 
in the fact that there is more dialogue than there is gameplay. With that much disproportion, it's a wonder why a fighting mechanic was even put into the game, and it wasn't just left as a visual novel, though I wouldn't be complaining about it as much if the dialogue didn't interrupt gameplay. <sighs> this guy. Stop! I'm gonna unfriend you. I'm gonna unfriend you! Stop updating your status. A lot of the dialogue in Undertale forcefully rips you from the gameplay, not unlike being violently thrown out of a United Airlines flight. Undertale has paragraphs upon paragraphs of dialogue between gameplay. I just want to send a message to all new and aspiring game devs out there. If I wanted to read paragraphs and pages of text, I would read a book, not play a video game. The combat is weird and inconsistent. I'm not gonna lie, I like the idea of a bullet hell mechanic in the game. It adds a level of skill requirement instead of RNG and whether your stats are better than your enemies that most RPGs have. The random encounters seem kind of arbitrary, but I can give them a pass. What I can't let go under my radar is how the game likes to do boss fights. Almost every time you encounter a boss, the game changes how the bullet hell and fighting mechanics work. One core rule of game design that even I know is intuitive mechanics. Let players ease into a new mechanic when you give it to them. When you get the gravity gun in Half-Life 2, the next chapter is filled with more physics objects than any of the rest of the game, along with extremely slow-moving, easy-to-kill enemies. This lets the player experiment with the gravity gun to find out how it works as a utility, how different items damage enemies, and when to switch to other weapons. And then, of course, you get to keep the gravity gun for the rest of the game. And here Undertale throws you immediately into a boss fight with a brand new mechanic that you were never introduced to before, and when you get done with the fight, you never see the mechanic used again throughout the entire game. It's the definition of unintuitive game design, and should have either been scrapped or fleshed out before release. The music. The music is actually pretty good. I'm serious, this game has fantastic music. Why are you looking at me like that? Am I not allowed to have one good thing to say about this game at this point? I actually like the music in Undertale, but it's not the best soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Clear throat. I didn't want to dislike this game. I went in hoping to find out what other people loved about it. I expected some big revelation when I started playing. Something that would make me say, wow, this game is much better than I expected. But now, and kind of disappointingly, that didn't happen. I was expecting some kind of satisfaction when I started playing, but it's been two years since its release today, and I'm still angry at how disappointing it was. I'm not telling anyone watching this video that they shouldn't enjoy Undertale. Listen, I'm the guy who genuinely dislikes Undertale and genuinely can enjoy No Man's Sky. It still shouldn't cost $60. Is my opinion really more important than other Joe Schmo? Of course it's not. Do I think it is? Yeah, totally! That's why I'm making a video about it! I just want to show people that their quote, perfect video game isn't perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect game, or anything. Everything has flaws, and even if they're so insignificant that you don't notice them, some people are going to notice them, and they're going to be turned away by them. Whatever, go play your video games or whatever. Oh, better yet, my friend James, who you may know as The Epoke, has a video that's basically the polar opposite of this one that you just watched. If you want to watch it, there's a link on the screen or in the description. And if you want to, you can subscribe to my channel, where hopefully I'll be reviewing something I actually enjoy soon. Thanks everyone for watching!